shovel, warp puddle. A lot of people use different things for warps, but I just use those two. Um, I'm honestly, I'll keep it really honest with you, I'm really not that good with warps. I kind of like just learned how to use them, but I will show you my settings for them, um, how I use them since then. So I just changed the off this and outer radius. Uh, you could expand it more. Honestly, I'm not even too sure. <laughs> it's kind of really half-assed tutorial because you know, I don't know how to use it, but I kind of get the gist. But I keep it at 250 and then I just put that zero. And essentially, I just play around with the base start so it looks like I want to. So if I wanted to kind of like pinch like that and then pop out, I'll do it like that and then just grab it with a really sharp grab. Not nothing too crazy. This is kind of a bad clip to show it. I'll put it on this one. Maybe that might help it. But what I really like to do with warps is um, I'll have a warp, uh, like a pinch one here, and then I'll use a one frame of um, just regular warp. And then I'll set it to fish eye and maybe a hundred. So then we'll kind of like blow them into each other. So it's like that, yeah. So again. These are the settings for that. This is warp puddle. Alright, now for warp bubble. This one I'm actually even worse with, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um yeah, no, it's it's bad. I'm really not that good with this effect. A lot of people have taught me how to use it, but like even then I'm still confused. I don't really get it, but I'm just gonna put my settings. They're kinda bad. I literally just turned everything all the way up. And I'm just playing around with the seed until <laughs> I like the way it looks. <laughs> like I'm really, really bad at warps. I try not to use them as much. I, mean, I, I always end up doing it because I just like the way they look, but this is, I guess, a warp. <laughs> There's definitely a better tutorial, so if you're coming here for warps, I feel bad for you because my warps are not good. Um, ways to combo into them though, like I was saying in the beginning. Um, of course, you could always just use s kind of for shake and um, I'll just make a quick shake real fast to show you kind of how that would look. Actually, yeah, I'll do one fifty. So. Okay, so yeah, that's a shake with the warp bubble, I guess. And I'll do the same thing with the warp puddle since I forgot to do it. But you can't even see the warp, but you, you get the idea, essentially. It just kind of adds a little bounce. Sometimes I'll even like turn this up to like 0.5, get it real crazy, and just keep playing around with the seed. And then yeah, look at that. Uh, you can see it a little bit more, but you just want to play around with it and, you know, make it fit whatever you're trying to do. But to be honest, this, I'm pretty 99.99% sure this is incorrect and that's not how you should be using it, but please don't take that from me. <laughs> Literally, please don't. <laughs> Alright. So, we have another warp. I'll keep the shakes there because I'm probably going to keep using them throughout this whole video, but we have another warp, which is Distort. Um, I think it's Distort Chroma, which is, to me, it's a warp, so I'm just going to put it in this category. Um, I keep this at 0.25, and that's literally it. I'll just keep it from there to there, and use them again that sharp graph, and continue the process. Sometimes I'll even do like a build up for it, so I'll put it like two frames back and put it on zero, and then just easy ease the whole thing. Um, and then graph the two keyframes from here and there. So, yeah, you see how it kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. A little effect um you can also put what i highly recommend too is if you this is optional of course but warp puddle or warp bubble if you want to use this effect i highly recommend just putting them in the same uh like this on the same adjustment layer um so i'll do the same warp puddle effect i was doing earlier um let me just fix this though. oh actually okay. let me fix that i don't think i changed that i think i just changed these two yeah i do i don't i don't change this um Yeah, make it like a warp. Yeah, like right there. And then keep doing 
right there, put it to zero here. But yeah, that's, that's another good one. Um, good little effect combo. But yeah, those are warps. Um, honestly, you can use them however you want. Um, <laughs> the best way I can describe them, I'm really not good with them, so like, it's really hard to even explain. But essentially, I just make sure you have the two keyframe build up for them. So it kind of like starts in the beginning clip, and then when it gets here, it kind of just boom, goes away. Um, and yeah, that's. That's warps. Motion detect. This is probably one of my favorite effects and I put it in almost every edit. Um, so you just make an adjustment layer and you type in motion detect. And essentially you have these settings. This is what makes that like cool effect. You might see it in a lot of edits, but this like black and white thing. There's a lot of options for it. You have Molt or Multiply. You have Add, which adds like the little white gloss effect to it. I don't know if you can see it. You have Screen, which I think does like the same thing. <laughs> they have Difference. Difference is also a good one. Um, I use this one a lot and I'll show it in uh, Effect Combo in just a second. They have Overlay, which, you know, kind of same thing. And Subtract, which is just like Difference, but Subtract. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so. What I do with motion detect a lot, mainly, um, I don't really use it on the beginning clip, but if I do, I always have it on like add or difference, and I'll essentially just opacity it from 100 to zero with a sh really sharp graph. So it'll, I'll duplicate that there and add the build up to it so you can kind of see it. Um, I'll be honest with you, motion detect is somewhat a really heavy effect, so please be mindful of when you're using it. It might like low key fry up your computer. Um, cause it does a lot, especially when working on, with a lot of it, like when I use it a lot, um, it's a lot going on, but this is essentially what it does. And honestly, you can make some, like again, it could transition your clips very well if used correctly. And that's, that's that. So my effect combo with this though is leaving it on difference. Of course I use time warp RGB. This is Sapphire. Um, everything I've shown so far is Sapphire, I believe. So make sure you have Sapphire and then I have deep well. And I'll change this to like 0.3 and basically just make it more colorful so yeah nice little touch to it there's a lot of things you can do with motion detect this isn't the only thing um, I'll show you one more thing continuing to leave this on um, keeping the same setup with the time warp and depot you're just gonna put it back to motion only but this time well yeah you can actually do it like this too um, if you want to just play around with all the things. You could literally keep it all like this if you wanted it to look like that, but it's completely optional. But another thing you could do, I think, if you just blend it with difference, it not difference, oops. I think it was overlay. Yeah, it's like overlay or something, and it does like this really cool thing that like looks good on really cool, really nice clips. So yeah, that's motion detect. people have asked me about how to use this effect it's, it's kind of I don't want to say it's complicated but you kind of have to just really play around with it and debate on how you want it to look so um, there's a lot of things for it you have outward which kind of does like an expansion you can just change the length to it and it'll expand out and then you have left which I mean that's pretty self-explanatory comes from the left and can go all the way around essentially and then you have right, which is the same thing. Left, right, same thing. You have upward, comes, you know, all this is mainly explanatory. Upward, downward, forward, backward, forward plus backward, and fan outward. I mainly use fan outward and outward. These are my two favorites. For this one, I'm gonna show fan outward and then I'll briefly go over outward. So for fan outward, I, Let's say, let's keep it at like 20, 21 for right now. I'm just gonna play around with the settings until I find which one is good to like kind of show. Little spread, 
think I'll keep this at two or three, maybe four. Oh, 1.6 is fine. Thickness, um, put it on like 20. Just change the density. And the density kind of makes it look like more loose, if you can see like the little dots. I'll kind of keep it on 150 or like 50 or 60 for right now, since I kind of like the way that looks. And then you have all these options for colors. Today I'm just going to do one color, which is just, it's in the name, one color. Um, I'm just going to pick like red or something. And I'm just going to continually just play around with the settings until I find something that I like. So this moves it, moves the X and Y. But we're going to leave that in the center because I'm mainly going to be playing around with this. to be somewhat loose. Let me see, what does that do again? That makes it more straight to the point. This one makes it more loose. Blurry and not. Oh, I like to keep it kind of, you know, I'll just leave it at that in opacity. I'll stay at 100. Then, yeah, essentially, let's say those are your settings. Probably not the best example for this, but I'll put it on like one so you can kind of see what one will look like. I'm gonna just play around with the lens, so I'm the wrong thing. Should I turn that on? No, I think I'll keep that off. But yeah, this is a simple way to use it. There's a lot of ways to use it. Um, this probably isn't the best example, but you essentially just want to play around with all the settings um, and you'll create this. Mm -hmm. 